The sad fact of life is that even superheroes die. Of course, unlike the rest of us, they always come back to life. But while a lot of superheroes have pretty straightforward deaths, Tony Stark's trips to the hereafter are downright weird. 1987's Armor Wars told the story of Tony Stark finding out that villains were using his designs to power their own armored costumes and then doing everything he could to take that technology back. It also featured the first time that Iron Man died. Sort of. The thing is, the Armored Avenger didn't go down swinging while battling to save the world. He mainly died because it was the best PR move. While it might seem like a good idea to take his inventions back from the bad guys, Tony's quest also meant taking on S.H.I.E.L.D. and beating up Stingray, a third-string Avenger. Even worse, Tony then took a trip to Russia, where he caused an international incident and accidentally killed an old rival, the Titanium Man. With a growing list of international crimes stacking up, Tony realized that there was only one thing left to do in order to keep both his personal reputation and his companies from being completely destroyed. He made a full confession and explained he was doing it for the greater good. You want my property? You can't have it. But I did you a big favor. I have successfully privatized world peace. Nah, just kidding. Instead, he created a false identity named Randall Pierce, claimed that Pierce being the one wearing the armor all this time, then faked Randall's death. The next month, there was a brand new Iron Man in brand new armor who just happened to sound like, act like, and know all the same things as the dearly departed Mr. Pierce. Faking your death is like eating a potato chip. You can't just stop at one. This time, it started when Tony was shot by an ex-girlfriend in 1989, which left him unable to walk without his armor. Since using technologies to deal with injuries had worked so well before, Tony decided to implant some microchips in his back and accidentally created other physical problems that started to kill him anyhow. Oops. After Tony spent some time heroically threatening to murder Justin Hammer unless he sold him his company for one dollar, Stark contacted his lawyer, made his final arrangements, and apparently died. In reality, he went into cryogenic stasis until another scientist could sort out his spinal software problems, all while letting even close friends like Rhodey think he was dead. This one gets complicated. Back in 1995, Marvel published The Crossing, a storyline that revealed that Tony Stark had secretly been murdering people behind the scenes for years, including killing a fellow Avenger called Yellow Jacket on the doorstep of Avengers Mansion. It wasn't entirely his fault, though. It turns out that Tony had been manipulated by a time-traveling supervillain named Amortus. When it was all revealed, Tony completely lost it and wound up fighting the Avengers and a younger version of himself before finally sacrificing his life to stop the plot had been an unwilling part off. With that, Tony Stark was dead, going out in one of the most ignoble deaths a superhero has ever experienced. The good news, though, is that all this happened when and because very few people were actually reading Iron Man comics, so nobody really cared. So about that younger version, when Tony Stark was revealed to have gone bad like a carton of year-old milk, the Avengers had to take action, decided that what they really needed to do was go to another dimension and get a teenage version of Tony and then make him fight his own murderous adult self. Really, guys? You couldn't have sent Thor and the Hulk to take care of him instead? Oh, uh, what? It might surprise you to find out that this plan did not work out very well. Fortunately, after the old Tony died, the new version survived for about 10 months. Then came Onslaught, a crossover in which a mingling of minds between Professor X and Magneto produced an all-powerful third entity. Onslaught initially appeared as a hulking, armored figure that looked like someone had tried to make Magneto entirely out of knives. But when the heroes teamed up to stop him, they discovered that this wasn't even his final form. Instead, he evolved into a being of pure intangible psychic energy. And unless they could contain Onslaught in some kind of physical body, they'd never be able to destroy him. The catch was that Onslaught fed on mutant energy, so if any of the X-Men tried to finish what their boss started, Onslaught would only get stronger. Thanks to that little catch, the Avengers and Fantastic Four jumped into Onslaught's brain tornado and broke him into manageable bite-sized chunks that all the mutants could zap into dust. With that, Team Tony had heroically sacrificed himself to save the world, only to be reborn as an adult Tony on an imaginary Earth created by Reed Richards' son, and then reborn once again back on regular Marvel Earth a year later. In short, 1996 was a hell of a year for Iron Man fans. Once Tony had returned to Earth in adulthood, he created a new suit that he nicknamed the Safe Armor. True to its name, it was a little bulkier and more defensive than some of the other suits, and even had an advanced artificial intelligence that was designed to keep its occupant from being harmed. Needless to say, that advanced AI did what every advanced AI in comics does. It became sentient and immediately went evil, something that no one could have predicted when Tony used pieces of Ultron in order to create it. You know, Ultron? A genocidal robot that once massacred an entire country? Yeah, nobody could have possibly seen this coming. You're unbearably naive. 
The story played out with Yama acting like an obsessive ex-lover, a bit of subtext that was only made less subtle once Yama went full Fifty Shades and tied Tony up while shouting things like, Get inside me, Tony. The whole time, however, it was creating an advanced nervous system that would allow it to feel the full range of human emotion, and while it had apparently saved things like not killing people for last, they showed up just in time. When Tony had a heart attack while they were fighting, the armor tore its own heart out and used it to save his life. After that, Tony buried the armor, complete with a grave marker that read, Here lies Iron Man, Avenger. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite superheroes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.